treadmill exercise gives you the exact same amount of intercellular MOTC secretion as four milligrams MOTC intramuscularly daily for a 100 kilogram bodybuilder, which are dosages that are not unheard of. Again, it's way cheaper just to do some treadmill exercise to increase your MOTC levels. But if you combine MOTC with anabolic energetic steroids, which are also associated with cardiac hypertrophy, that might be a double mammy for heart enlargement. So let's skip over the clinical trials in the FDA-approved medical applications because there are none and proceed right into the evidence-based unique characteristics of MOTC, which again, no human subjects, no studies, no human clinical trials anywhere to be found. So that means we have to dubiously extrapolate from the animal models to see what kind of benefits we could potentially expect by various dosages of MOTC administrations. Serum concentrations in children and adults are between 150 picograms to 580 nanograms per milliliter. And in adults, that's between, let's say, 46 to 220 nanograms per milliliter. But on average, humans have a serum concentration of approximately 200 nanograms per milliliter. MOTC has a concentration-dependent correlation up to 1,200 milligrams per milliliter with maximum force and average power output during interval counter movement, jump tests, stemming from human subjects, and this same study showed that there's a concentration-dependent correlation up to 1,100 milligrams per milliliter with total muscle mass, again, stemming from human subjects. Now, I'm well aware that I just mentioned that in adult humans, a normal concentration, an average concentration of MOTC in the bloodstream is 200 nanograms per milliliter. And here they mention up to 1200 milligrams per milliliter. And I have no explanation for that. Is that a difference in testing parameters between the various studies using a liquid chromatography, tandem mass spectrometry, or some other testing parameter like Alicia or Eclia? I'm not entirely sure. Um, I really don't know, right? I, I don't have an explanation. It's indeed a 2.5 to 6 times million fold difference. Um, and, and besides the testing uh, parameters, uh, I, I really don't have an explanation for it. This is what's reported in scientific evidence. There might be some discrepancy there. And even if both of them were, uh, let's say, nanograms per milliliter or milligrams per milliliter, then I would expect a five, six times fold increase compared to baseline MOTC levels when comparing that to, uh, well, the concentration-dependent correlation with muscle mass and this uh, particular interval counter-movement jump test, which would make more sense, not a 5 million times increase or 6 million time increase. But hey, this is scientific evidence. This is what we have to work with. All citations, as usual, are posted down below in case you want to do your own comparison and uh, MOTC analysis. And then let me know what you think of these particular results. I found it very confusing, to be honest. But this is what we have to work with. And the results of this study look a little bit more reasonable. MOTC increased by 150 to 160% approximately in serum during high-intensity interval cycling exercise and by almost 1,200% within skeletal muscle for over four hours following exercise, again, in human subjects. So this is all related to endogenous MOTC production. Again, MOTC is being stored in the mitochondria and then being released under metabolic stress or oxidative stress. So if you want your MOTC levels to increase, you don't want to spend money on gray area peptide websites and start injecting MOTC, um, then all you need to do is wind sprints or heavy squats or vigorous strenuous exercise, and you might get up to 1,200% increase of MOTC levels within skeletal muscle for four hours post-workout. But if you're now so big that you suffer from sleep apnea, then it's good to know that MOTC decreases by 66.9 to 79.7% through insulin resistance in cases of mild to severe obstructive sleep apnea observed in humans. So if you feel that you don't have energy levels and you have sleep apnea, which you can self-diagnose with a video I made about self-diagnosis at home, if you suspect that you have sleep apnea and you don't have a partner to kick you uh, basically in the back all night long because you're snoring so loud. Um, so you can self-diagnose with that video using a laptop and just filming yourself over the night and looking for the peaks in the audio track regarding uh, breathing problems, like where you're snoring very loud or you're gasping for air. You can do it all by yourself at home and then uh, find a way to purchase a CPAP machine because, hey, let's say 67% to 80% decrease in mod C levels when you suffer from sleep apnea are obviously going to make you very tired during the day and not improve your sleep quality at night. MOTC decreases in patients with type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, sarcopenia in peritoneal dialysis patients, 
vascular endothelial dysfunction by 6.5% to 20.3% in obesity, so don't get fat, by 11% to 21% in the elderly, don't get old, easier said than done. Uh, I'm fighting it every single day. By 31% in coronary artery disease and by 15.7 to 57.5% in chronic kidney disease. Bottom line is here, take care of yourself. Don't get fat, don't get type two diabetes, don't get cardiovascular disease or chronic kidney disease and your mitochondria should function as they should. Later on, you can decide to upregulate mitochondrial function and biogenesis with exogenous mod C administration and take your energy levels to the next level. But again, if you don't treat yourself well, it doesn't matter how much mod C you use, energy will never be as good as you would otherwise observe when you're healthy. Mod C decreases by approximately 55% in the bloodstream and approximately 10% in the brain, 5% in the heart, 70% in skeletal muscle, yeah, that much, and 40% in the testes during fasting, stemming from an animal model using mice of an unknown time frame. So I'm not entirely sure if that's one day fasting or one week fasting. I couldn't piece that together in the scientific evidence. Unfortunately, still fasting is not good for MOTC production, even though MOTC production after fasting generally goes up because, well, obviously you're uh, consuming food again. And in that sense, the nutrients that the mitochondria require for cellular energy metabolism comes up again. And then a MOTC signaling is restored to baseline parameters. MOTC improves physical capacity, motor coordination, but not grip strength. And again, grip strength is a sign of longevity shown in human subjects and various animal models. So if grip strength doesn't improve, then longevity outcome might not improve either. Uh, that's performed in an animal model using mice observed at five milligrams per one kilogram of body weight by intraperitoneal injection daily for two weeks consecutively, which translates to 0.41 milligrams per one kilogram of body weight by intramuscular administration daily for humans. I feel that intraperitoneal administration into the abdomen and intramuscular injections anywhere in the skeletal muscle all over the body is reasonably comparable regarding the release of the injection depot. Um, but that would mean 41 milligrams daily for a 100 kilogram bodybuilder. Uh, that dose would put you on the floor with anaphylactic shock if you inject 41 milligrams MOTC intramuscularly. MOTC improves insulin sensitivity and physical capacity, stemming from an animal model using mice on a high fat diet. And this effect was observed at 5 milligrams to 50 milligrams per 1 kilogram of body weight by intraperitoneal injection daily for seven to 10 days. And again, that translates to 41 milligrams to 122 milligrams for a 100 kilogram bodybuilder. That dose, honestly, dude, that dose will make you go nuclear like a Kira. MOTC upregulates peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma coactivator 1 alpha expression in skeletal muscle stemming from an in vitro study using contractile mild tube C2, C12 mouse myoblast cells, which basically means improved mitochondrial biogenesis. But this also means that MOTC has potential synergistic effects with cardarine, telmosartan, glucophage, ACAR, resveratrol, omega-3 fatty acids, caffeine, epicatogen, and nitric oxide boosting supplements, which all have various effects on peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma coactivator 1-alpha expression themselves. And in this study where they compared exogenous MOTC administrations to actual treadmill exercise, where MOTC secretion goes up due to metabolic stress and oxidative stress, it was shown that with treadmill exercise, there was comparable peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma coactivator 1-alpha expression, comparable glucose transporter 4 expression, comparable serum MOTC concentrations and comparable skeletal muscle MOTC concentrations, comparing treadmill exercise versus 0.5 milligrams mod C per one kilogram of body weight by intraperitoneal injection daily for eight weeks consecutively. So a treadmill exercise gives you the exact same amount of intracellular mod C secretion as uh, well, you can extrapolate that to the human equivalent dose at 0.04 milligrams per one kilogram of body weight intramuscularly daily for humans, which translates to four milligrams mod C intramuscularly daily for a hundred kilogram bodybuilder, which are dosages that are not unheard of. This means comparing treadmill exercise to MOTC at this particular dosage range means that MOTC is basically an exercise mimetic. If you uh, extrapolate that in the other direction, right, they're comparing treadmill exercise to exogenous MOTC administration. But if we, if we flip that around, 
you administer mod C and you get an exercise like effect, which would otherwise increase your mod C levels. Again, it's way cheaper just to do some treadmill exercise to increase your mod C levels. But this does confirm that mod C is an exercise mimetic similar to how SLUPP332 was proven in animal models to be an exercise mimetic. So imagine if you combine vigorous exercise with SLUPP332 and mod C. Matsi increases ICAR concentrations by approximately 2000%. Yes, I had to do a double take on that. It's confirmed. I read this study three times just to make sure. Matsi increases ICAR concentrations by approximately 2000% and promotes fatty acid oxidation and carnitine shuttling into the mitochondria, and it increases glucose uptake in the mitochondria as well. This is stemming from an in vitro study using human embryonic kidney, HEC239 cells, and MOTC increases whole body insulin sensitivity by approximately 30% and increases glucose uptake again, stemming from an animal model using mice. But this was observed at 5 milligrams per 1 kilogram of body weight by intraperitoneal injection daily for 7 days, which is 0.41 milligrams per 1 kilogram of body weight, aka 41 milligrams for 100 kilogram bodybuilder. Way too high. Another study shows that MOTC lowers serum glucose, insulin, and leptin levels, improves insulin sensitivity, and improves fatty acid metabolism in an animal model using mice on a high-fat diet. This was observed at 2.5 milligrams per 1 kilogram of body weight by intraperitoneal injection twice daily for two days. So that it translates to 0.2 milligrams per 1 kilogram of body weight intramuscularly twice daily for humans, aka 40 milligrams daily. Also way too much. MOTC prevents high-fat diet, induced insulin resistance, and obesity, reduces fat gain by approximately 10%, stemming from an animal model using mice on a high-fat diet, and this was observed at a little bit more moderate dose, 0.5 milligrams per 1 kilogram of body weight by IP injection daily for three weeks, which translates to 0.04 milligrams per 1 kilogram body weight IM daily for humans, which translates to 4.1 milligrams for 100 kilogram bodybuilder. Again, those dosages are not unheard of, even though personally I feel that that dosage is way too high if done daily. Um, so if you want to prevent high fat diet induced insulin resistance and obesity, and basically an off season on the ketogenic diet where you're stuffing your face with nuts, seeds, avocado, and animal fats, uh, then four to five milligrams of MOTC daily might be able to prevent you from getting morbidly obese, or you can just eat less and spend less money on drugs, right? I'll leave that up to you. And this study is pretty promising. MOTC increases lifespan by 4.6% to 7%, reverts age-dependent physical decline, improves grip strength, unlike the other animal model, which showed no improvement in overall grip strength. This is an animal model using mice on a high-fat diet again, and this was observed at 15 milligrams per one kilogram of body weight by intraperitoneal injection three times weekly for up to six months, basically the end of life of these mice. So first these mice were made obese on a high fat diet, and then towards the tail end of their life, they received a whopping dose of 15 milligrams per one kilogram of body weight, which translates to 1.22 milligrams per one kilogram of body weight intramuscularly three times weekly for humans, aka 122 milligrams mod C three times weekly intramuscularly. Don't do it, <laughs> especially if you're old. That's literally anaphylactic shock three times per week just to expand your life uh, span by what 6.4 to 7 percent I, I think it's going to be held but again it's it's up to you if you have the money and you can ride through the anaphylactic shock in the side irritation and in case you didn't get the memo yet here's an animated gif of godzilla going nuclear on Ghidorah, and this scene is too good not to play all the way to the end take that you alien hydro piece of shit. nobody f with godzilla and mothra okay back to the evidence-based unique characteristics of Matsi. Matsi improves fatty acid utilization during complete glucose restriction, stemming from an in vitro study using C2, C12 mouse myoblast cells, which prevents cell death. Matsi has comparable improvements in cardiac function, body weight, fasting blood glucose levels, fasting insulin levels, and HOMA IR score as treadmill exercise, stemming from an animal model using diabetic rats on a high fat and high sugar diet, again, confirming further exercise mimetic effects of Matsi comparing that directly to treadmill exercise, albeit that in both animal models, the animals were uh, fat and obese and had diabetes. Um, I don't associate with that, but hey, uh, this is the best that we can go with. And this was observed at 0.5 milligrams per one kilogram of body weight by intraperitoneal injection daily for eight weeks, which translates to 0.08 milligrams per one kilogram of body weight intramuscularly daily for humans, aka eight milligrams if you're a hundred kilogram 
Bodybuilder and Motsi increases aerobic exercise capacity, improves cardiac function, but also induces cardiac hypertrophy when combined with treadmill exercise stemming from an animal model using rats with the exact same dosage protocol. So again, that translates to 0 0.8 milligrams per one kilogram body weight intramuscularly daily for humans. This also confirms an exercise mimetic effect. But if you combine MOTC with anabolic androgenic steroids, which are also associated with cardiac hypertrophy, and that might be a double mammy for heart enlargement. So this is a fair warning for you guys, even though this is stemming from animal models and most of the cardiac uh, hypertrophy, you also see in animal models being administered anabolic androgenic steroids, but this is also confirmed in human subjects. The combination of MOTC and anabolic androgenic steroids with vigorous, strenuous, intense, highly pleasurable and enjoyable exercise uh, might cause heart enlargement. So. Make sure you keep track of your heart by doing an echocardiogram at least once yearly to make sure that your heart doesn't get too big for your chest and now you can no longer breathe. And under conditions where there's no metabolic stress or oxidative stress, MOTC translates from the mitochondria to the cellular nucleus when stimulated by either glucophage, aka metformin, and ICAR. And this is mediated by adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase, AMPK, activity, so if you want to liberate or promote the secretion of MOTC, but you don't want to exercise, uh, that's what the metformin is for. Yeah, that's also an exercise mimetic through this pathway, or that's what the ICAR is for, which is something I would prefer because that actually improves fatty acid oxidation and glucophage just makes you flat and shit your brains out. And now all of this food that you spend money on is literally going down in the toilet. Uh, why don't you eat something cheaper instead? 